Well, the lighting in here is not the greatest, but we're backed into the garage now and we're gonna start the back brakes. I got the jack stand underneath the car, jacking up this side. I'm gonna get over here, take the wheels off. Look at those rusty brakes. Oh boy. Rusty, rusty. Hmm. All right. Now let's see if I can find my little tool. I do not have a brake retractor kit, so I use this little guy right here to retract the brakes. So I'm gonna get the caliper out. We'll push the piston back in. Now let's go release the emergency brake. Doing this stuff with a mask on is murder. Alright. Now. Oh, they're good and rusty. Alright. Get you over here so you can see this. Look at that crust. That crust all over the place. Now what we're gonna do is in that little hole there, that little hole there, and around. All of that middle. Same thing on the other side. I'm going to let that soak for a few minutes. And then we'll start taking that caliper off. Get these caliper bolts out of here. And get behind this one. I already kind of cracked them loose, but stubborn. All right, now this is gonna be fun because these are the types of pistons that you have to rotate. And I have to get this off, and I've got a substantial lip. Oh, this is gonna be fun, fun, fun. Calipers off and out of the way. That was easy. Be sp particularly careful 
I don't know if you can see this or not. I'll turn you a little bit here. That boot right there, be particularly careful with that because if you punch a hole in it, that caliper is done. And see the position that it's in? When you're done, you're gonna make have to make sure that these little marks are pretty much in the same relative position. So you got a opening at top, bottom, side, side. You don't want these these ribs standing up and down. You want them crisscross like this. So set that down. It's not going anywhere. The emergency brake cable is gonna hold it real well. Now get this stuff here apart. It's right here, we can see again. Lit up well enough? Yep, good. All right. Now, well, we get some strange clips in here. Now we gotta get these brake shoes out of here. Coming apart the layers. Caliper bracket bolts. Counter sunk. They feel like 14s. Now uh, let's see what we got. That's a 17, that's not gonna be it. Okay. All right, where did my 14 go? There it is. What's this, 14? Yep, it's a 14. No. Now, all you guys out there that are doing your own brake jobs, Always, always, always make sure take this caliper bracket off and clean it up. Make sure that your slide pins move. Like these are beautiful. They both move nice and easy. Nice and easy. They pull in so they got a good seal. We're not going to disturb those. Let's get these bolts out of here. Because we are going to have to resurface the contact points of the brake pads. both of our caliper bracket bolts and <laughs> there we go and they're kind of worn down not too too bad but they're that one's wiggling around a little bit and that other one this the uh, inboard is kind of stuck get those out this caliper bracket cleaned up every tool is a hammer there we go now take a look at these really weird looking little brake clips I'm gonna take those out Pull up on this, and out it comes. Same thing on the other side, just pull up on it, and out it comes. Look at all that dirt, dust, dirt, rust. And in there we've got, uh, see if I can get you a shot here. Got a little bit more of that rust jacking in there. And uh, let's see, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and clean that up. Again, the nice, blue file. Let's get me some camera move so I can work with this. Alright. And you'll see why this file is so good is that it fits right down into this groove. Now when you're doing this make sure that you're careful to not hit your boot. If you make a hole in that then you're gonna have problems with the pin. Now all we're doing is taking the rust off. We're not taking down metal. You do not want to take down metal. You just want to get all the rust scaling off. And this file will get all this coarse stuff taken down real easy. And yeah, I'm going back and forth, but I'm only exerting pressure while I'm in my forward cutting stroke. Because if you put pressure on it in the re reverse, you'll actually dull the, the points on it. So, A 
only exert the pressure while you're going in your forward cutting stroke. So even pressure so that you cut into the outside as much as the inside. And all surfaces. Double check whether or not your contact points here or here. You know, on this side or this side, whether your brake pads ride on that. And in this case, they don't. In this case, this contact is only on the tip of the ear. So these are the critical squeezing points. So you want to make sure that the bottom of this is perfectly smooth, or at least as close to it as we can get. And same thing on the other side. Battery on the camera's running really low. It's taking a, taking a little while. Fortunately, I can be charging it whenever I need to, I suppose. Now I'm inside the uh, garage, stagnant air. Ventilation in here is not the greatest. The garage doors are open, but the air still floats, and I can smell all of this brake dust and rust. Now, good thing I'm kind of kind of a good thing I'm wearing my mask right now because really don't want to get that all over me. I don't want to be inhaling all of that. That wrong way. So I hear you guys can maybe see see where we want to go here. Over there. That works. Hey, right, you see me. Alright, now. Gotta get this rotor off. I've already put the bolts in. And hopefully we don't have to have big nasty. I don't have a big nasty, so this has to do it. back out so we go on the other side and let's see what we got here bearing turns nice and easy nothing here to worry about inspect everything while we're in here There's no issues Everything that we can see looks good. Piston, the boot, everything looks good. Alrighty. So we can go ahead and clean this up. Go grab my wire brush. Just to get a little scaling off of here. Right. Fluid film. New motor. It's a regular, ordinary lug nut. And that'll lock my rotor right in place for me. Now, we got to get this bracket finished.
grease. Again, being very careful to not slice your fingers. You get all of those surfaces that you just filed in a light coating of grease. You don't want so much grease on it though that when you put your hardware clips in then you squish all the grease right into the rotor. Because the grease on the rotor means grease in your brake pads. And grease in your brake pads means no stop. It also means that you will burn up your brake pads prematurely and they will completely fail on you. You know, I got grease on my mask. Yay me. Mm, yum, nice smell. Okay, now that's done. Yeah, I end up with a clean finger. Now I got all this hardware. There's a whole bunch of different clips in here. And obviously we're only gonna need four. So we gotta take one of the old ones and compare, figure out what the differences are here. Usually the difference is, is there's a difference in the thickness of the rotor. So it's probably gonna be width. Uh, tricky, tricky, because they all look the same. But if they're giving you eight, there's two different kinds. We gotta figure out what they are and figure out what the differences are. It's like these have got a hole in them, these don't. So we know one difference and don't know the rest. All right, it took me a few minutes to figure out what the difference is, but see how this has got a big square hole right there? And this one does not, and this one does. So we're going to pull all four of these out that have that big hole. And then the brake pads, you got a, one pad that doesn't have anything on it, and one pad that comes with the clip. The clip is on the inboard. It's always going to be on the leading edge, so this is for the passenger side. And we're going to go ahead and start reassembling this caliper. All right, sneaky little clips just pulled the fast one on me. You get the big one here with a hole where the other one that goes on the caliper does not have that big hole. So one is leading edge, one is trailing edge. So we're going to have to figure that out and put two of these back over here, take two of these out of here, and figure out which one's which. All righty, forensic files time. <laughs> Okay, being that I have no idea which one's which, we're going to have to figure this out using basic forensics. See the wear pattern on there? The wear pattern on there? Well, we're going to figure out which way this goes for that wear pairing. So that one there goes right there, which means the one with the big hole goes on the other side. So we'll put the one with the big hole in first. And then we'll do the other one. Now that we got those clips in place, we'll go ahead and put the caliper bracket in place. There's the hole. Where's the hole? There's the hole. Grease on there, we'll wipe that off. Right. And it's a 14 millimeter. That down. Trump, Trump did this invo invocation of the. Uh... All right, and we'll get these tightened down. Tighten them. Brake pads in place. Remember the one with the squealer goes on the inboard. And these are 
is going to take a little work to get in because this clip's got all sorts of gizmos and gadgets on it. Now I know why Eric does these off the car. I may have to. Until I figure out at least how they go in here. Oh, that wasn't too bad. I could always edit this and make it look really easy, but it isn't always super easy. Or something. It's not. It's not getting hooked on. See, there's a little spring right here that pushes down. That could be where the problem is. But. Take the bracket back off. See if we can get the brake pad, pad back on that way. And we'll be right back as soon as I figure out how to get the brake pad in. All right, now we finally figured out how to get these brake pads in there. Trust me, it wasn't easy. The way these things were stamped, there was a little burr on them, and they were really binding against the hardware clip, so... Took the burr off, got them in there. Now we're gonna put the caliper bracket back, or the caliper back in place. Bracket, yeah, that's what it was. Doing a brake job while America is losing its mind. And protests all over the country. The president making a fool of himself. What else is new? Oh, hey, these brake pads, they're new. Okay, now we got that all in. Let's get these tightened down. And then we get to do the, the fun part with uh, backing off the piston and the, the caliper. Those are real tight. All right. Brake pads are in. And they move. That's good. All right. So this one's had a couple of little puzzles that were a little difficult to deal with. And we're trying to attempt. Push the caliper back in. Definitely going to have to get myself one of those kits. Ouch.
assuming this is going back in. Now, get the little marks lined up. Still not there yet. Yeah, just being really slow about going back in. Not look like it's going in. So we're gonna try the C press method. Here I'm gonna pin this in place with the C press. See if I can get it to tighten down that way. Light pressure. And then rotate it. Tighten it up some more. difficult to do without the right tools. Light pressure with the clamp. And then turn. Light pressure with the clamp. And then turn. And you gotta keep, keep the pressure, light pressure on with the clamp. And that is working the piston in very nicely. All right, now I gotta keep an eye on the boot because the boot starting to swell out there. things now so now I gotta be careful I need some silicone I make everything super slippery thing All right. 
Ow. <sighs> Keep working that boot back and forth until it's all the way down flush with the piston. Now I gotta turn the piston just a little bit more to get it into the right position. A little bit more. That should be it right there. Now let's try again. And we're on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the caliper bolts back in. Backed out a lot more than I thought it would. That's cool. Goody, goody, goody. All right. Now I'll grab my wrench and start tightening these back down. Same thing on the bottom. Make sure these nuts in here have a little bit of a lip on the bottom of them. You don't want to get the wrench stuck in there. So just keep that in mind. It's already tightening up on there. You can wiggle the wrench out. And get just enough on there, and you can still tighten the bolt. Now nice and tight. Everything moves in and out nice and easy. This side's done. And we'll put the wheel back on. up the mess over here and clean up this mess get this all out of here rotor back out of the way and all the old parts and all the brake shoes Throw it out the old boxes. The wrench, everything out of the way here. The lug nuts off to the side. Take the pet trainer out from underneath the vehicle. Wheel back on. Now the locking lug nuts this vehicle's got, I like to keep them opposite the valve stem. I don't know if that's any reason for that, just maybe just OCD. And get all the lug nuts on. Get this all tightened down. Repeat the process on the other side. And that's how you get your brakes done on a 2015. Toyota Corolla, this is the front and rear. 
how to do it with a mask on. And let's see, I gotta go find the lug nut impact. Uh, there you go. There you go. And if you guys found this one helpful, please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Again, I appreciate the subscriptions. I'll see what else I can come up with for you guys in the near future. In the meantime, have a good one. Stay safe. And have a good night. And oh yeah, I almost forgot. You got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. <laughs>